Okay, so uh, we got confirmation that we can be heard on Facebook Live. So thank you everyone for joining us. We will get started. My name is Julie Varaghese and I am on the operations team of the Black Alliance for Peace, as well as one of the coordinators of the Black Alliance for Peace Solidarity Network. Today, uh, we are holding press events and launch events in three different cities here in Washington, D.C., as well as in Havana, Cuba, and in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. And uh, so this Zone of Peace that, uh, campaign that we are launching is uh, intended to activate a declaration that was put out in 2014 by the community of Latin American and Caribbean states and uh, it's intended to um, bring together popular forces throughout the Americas region to ensure that uh, the declaration is implemented by through a people-centered process. And so uh, some of the organizations that the Black Alliance for Peace is coordinating this effort with some of the key partner organizations include Molagov in Haiti, uh, Proceso de Comunidades de Negras, in uh, PCN in Col Colombia, as well as uh, Asociación de Trabajadores del Campo in Nicaragua, Task Force on the Americas, <laughs> United Na National Anti-War Coalition, Alliance for Global Justice, as well, well as several other organizations throughout the uh, region, uh, across the region, including uh, one other like the Black is back coalition for social justice, peace and reparations, and, and many other organizations, peace loving organizations across the region. And so today we are going to have four speakers to present on the zone of peace campaign that the Black Alliance for Peace is launching today with these organizations. And our uh, first speaker will be Ajamo Baraka, who is the chair of the Black Alliance for Peace coordinating committee. Then we will have Jamima Pierre, who is a co-coordinator of the Black Alliance for Peace Haiti Americas team. Then we'll have Nina Makapinlak, who is the Secretary General of Bayan USA, and Margaret Kimberly, who is one of the coordinating, coordinating committee members of the Black Alliance for Peace. And so first we'll have Ajamu Baraka. Ajamu is the former national organizer of the Black Alliance for Peace, and he is now chair of the Black Alliance for Peace Coordinating Committee. Baraka was the 2016 candidate for vice president on the vice on the Green Party ticket, and beyond his Black Alliance for Peace duties, he serves on the executive committee of the U.S. Peace Council, the steering committee of the Black Back Coalition and the leadership body of the United National Anti-War Coalition, also known as UNAC. He was awarded the U.S. Peace Memorial 2019 Peace Prize and is the recipient of the Serena Sherm Award for Uncompromised Integrity in, in Journalism. So I'll pass it on to Ajamu. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. And thank everyone who um, will be joining us and are here at this moment for this, I think, historic uh, event. Um, today is April the 4th. The launching of this campaign was a deliberate um, decision made by the Black Alliance of Peace uh, to launch on this day. April the 4th, uh, 2017, is the day that we actually launched the Black Alliance for Peace, uh, an organization that is committed to attempting to revive the traditional anti-war and anti-imperialist traditions of uh, the Black radical movement in our country, in the US. It is also a day that we chose because one of the symbols of the opposition to war and militarism was taken from us on this day by elements uh, that we claim and argue uh, are associated, were associated with the US state. And that individual, of course, was Martin Luther King. So we thought that today would be the, the most appropriate day to launch this historic effort, to not only uh, raise up uh, Dr. King, but also to remind our members uh, and to remind the world 
uh, that we have this for formation in place and we are in fact committed to a new form of anti-war and anti-imperialist politics. This is a monumental um, attempt. Uh, CELAC made a call to, uh, uh, to transform our region. You know, when we say our region, we mean the Americas uh, into a zone of peace. This was a, a declaration that we thought was very, very important. But it was a declaration issued by states. And we recognize that we're not going to be able to transform ourselves and transform the politics of this region unless we have a massive regional-wide popular movement. So that is what we are attempting to try to organize. Now, we have no illusions about our ability to pull this off by ourselves. That capacity does not exist. So what we have been doing over the last year is engaging in conversations, uh, building relationships with uh, our allies and friends from across the region, because this has to be a regional wide effort. But we recognize though, that even though we know we have to have a regional wide effort, we have a special responsibility, those of us who are at the center of empire, because it is the US empire that's primarily responsible for the, the havoc, the, the, the death and destruction, uh, instability that we see and experience in our region. So while we are building this regional wide campaign, we understand that we have got to also build sufficient capacity and power among the progressive elements in the United States also. So today is the day that we make uh, this declaration to, uh, to the world uh, that we are going to attempt to build this. We see this as something that we have to do, especially at this historical moment, when we see a deepening crisis among those forces uh, that are primarily responsible for uh, most of the death and destruction on this planet that they are committed to using their power to try to maintain the hegemony. Uh, and they're committed to militarism to in the assertion of that power. And so we have to build a counter movement. They cannot assert themselves militarily without the support of the people, without the support in the United States of the people. But we intend to undermine that support uh, to present a different image of what we need to be building, to build the capacity to, to resist the, the merchants of death. So today is our declaration, uh, our commitment uh, to building this, this process uh, and to uh, asking everyone in this, who's in the sound of our voice, everyone who will be reading our materials over the next few weeks and months to consider joining us in this effort. We have the majority, folks. We are, in fact, the majority. And if we have a vision that we can be more than what we are today, and we have the capacity through building organization, we, in fact, can transform ourselves and can transform the conditions. So we say, join us, um, and we will uh, talk about how we do this uh, and build the capacity, move uh, ourselves forward, and to build the kind of powerful movement we have to build in order to be successful. Thank you, Ajamu. So if you have any questions, uh, members of the press on Zoom or Facebook or in person, please hold on to them until the questions portion. Our next speaker is Jamima Pierre. She is the co one of the coordinators of the Haiti Americas team of the Black Alliance for Peace. She also serves as professor of African-American studies and anthropology at UCLA and is an editor and contributor for the Black Agenda Report. Thank you, Jamima. Thank you so much, um, um, everyone, for being here. Um, when in 2004, the US, France, and Canada succeeded in its coup d'etat against Haiti's democratically elected president, very few other countries in the region criticized the move. In fact, similar to reactions of today, most governments followed the lead of the US when it came to imperial policies in Haiti. 
After the 2004 coup, Haiti was subjected to uh, a combined military intervention by the United States, France, and Canada, comprising a multinational interim force called MINISTA, a multi-billion dollar operation Minister had at any given time between 6,000 and 12,000 military troops and police stationed in Haiti alongside uh, thousands of civilian personnel. Importantly, Minister was the first security mission in the region under the auspices of the UN to be led by Brazilian and Chilean militaries and almost entirely composed of Latin American forces, particularly from Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Bolivia, Ecuador, and Uruguay. And the UN occupation under minister was marked by its brutality towards Haitian people. In addition to bringing cholera to the country, UN forces were used to quell pro-democracy protests. Peacekeepers also um, um, uh, participated in the extensive exploitation of the people, um, and exploitation and killing of the people. But one of the reasons that the brutal UN military occupation of Haiti could fly under the radar was because it was populated by a multinational, multiracial military and civilian force, mostly from the region. Why is it so easy for these non-white and oppressed nations to come and serve US and Western imperial interest in Haiti? Could it be that they too have imbibed the dehumanized and frankly racist views of Haitian people? One would think so if one viewed the recent actions by some leaders in the region that deploy the similar racist tropes and assumptions about Haiti and are openly supporting another U.S.-Canada-sponsored foreign military inv invasion and occupation of Haiti. While it is claimed that this military occupation officially ended in 2017 with the dissolution of minister, it continues through the core group made up of representatives of Brazil, Canada, France, Germany, US, Spain, European Union, and importantly, the Organization of American States. The core group works hand in hand with the US State Department and is the imperial power behind the ongoing destruction of Haiti's sovereignty. In the first instance, Haiti is the perfect site to help us understand the contemporary guises and articulations of US and Western imperialism in the region. With Haiti as clear model and in the continuation of the Monroe Doctrine, the US government has greatly expanded its military force in the region. Southcom, for example, is a key, key concern. Incorporating the Caribbean and South and Central America, US Southern Command, Southern Command or Southcom, claims to be protecting human rights in the region as a long-term responsibility through the development of regional militaries controlled and facilitated by the US. Southcom works to extend U.S. military influence throughout the Americas and to promote militarism in line with U.S. interests, relying on spurious claims of humanitarian assistance and disaster relief and counter narcotics operations to increase U.S. control over the region. Each year, Southcom uses humanitarian assistance exercises and disaster response as military training platforms. So the official linking of the military humanitarianism comes through the renewed U.S. Monroe Doctrine, now called the Global Fragilities Act, a 10-year plan that will allow um, what they call, that the U.S. is would allow for the integration and sequencing of U.S. diplomatic development and military related efforts in the region. The Black Alliance for Peace, Haiti America's team, is coordinating a collective campaign for a zone of peace in our Americas. But we say that Haiti is key to the liberation and transformation of the Americas region. Haiti is part of the global anti-colonial revolutionary project and revolutionary Pan-African and Pan-African movement. Therefore, for BAP, Haiti is the entry point for our expanded work in the Americas. Haiti has been a focal point for Pan-African liberation and anti-colonial struggle since 1791, um, cemented its liberatory and revolutionary character through the adoption of a new flag in 1803 and proclaimed independence. In recognizing Haiti's critical place in the struggle for both Black liberation and anti-colonial independence fights throughout the Americas, we also understand the U.S. empire's interest in the expansion of hegemony has resulted in constant reactionary onslaught against the people of Haiti and decades of instability for the nation and region as a whole. 
As the Haiti Americas team, we are focused on achieving liberation for all people of all peoples in the region and a real and real peace in the Americas. Through we call for an international zone of peace in the Americas. And as part of this, we must both understand, understand the extent of US imperialism in the Americas and work to join our peoples and organizations in coordinating an anti-militarist and anti-imperialist struggle. The call, this call for peace is a call for the peoples and nations of the Caribbean and Latin America to resist the US, EU, NATO axis of domination, increasing the increasing militarization of our region and the US NATO soft power practices in our Americas. So our demands are to dismantle Southcom, for the United States to return to Cuba and its people, um, the, the territory illegally occupied by the Guantanamo Naval Base, the stopping of military interventions into Haiti, the shutdown of the state terrorist training facility called the Western Hemisphere Institute for Security Cooperation. And we oppose all illegal sanctions and blockades of nations in our regions, including all economic warfare and lawfare. And we recognize their sovereignty. Thank you. Thank you, Jamima. Uh, and again, if you're a member of the press and you're watching on Zoom or on Facebook or are in person, please hold your questions until after all the speakers have gone. So our next speaker is Nina Makapinlak. She is the Secretary General of Bayan USA, an anti-imperialist alliance of over 20 national democratic organizations that are fighting for a genuine democracy and national liberation in the Philippines. Thank you. Warm and militant greetings. Bayan USA is a proud member of the United National Anti-War Coalition, or UNAC, and we are happy to be here today to commemorate the sixth anniversary of Black Alliance for Peace and support the launching of the Zones of Peace campaign. We remember the great Martin Luther King Jr., the anti-capitalist, anti-war Martin Luther King Jr., who spoke out against the oppression of Black people in the U.S. and against the oppression of peoples everywhere under U.S. imperialism. From the ranks of grassroots anti-imperialist Filipino youth, students, workers, professionals, women, and migrants, Bayan USA condemns US-led war both in the US and our homelands. With almost half of the world's GDP, the Asia Pacific is central for any state aspiring to hold the mantle of global superpower. It is no wonder then that the Asia Pacific is home to some of the most significant and consolidated US-led agreements in the world after the mostly Europe-centric NATO. With the rise of China as a competing superpower and the signaling of an adversary military alliance in the Shanghai Cooperation Alliance, the US Pacific Command was renamed Indo-Pacific Command in 2018 to expand its operations. The treaty signed by the US gave it easy access to territories through the allowance of overseas military bases, public displays of strength through joint military exercises, reliable markets for weapon sales, and the assurance that signed countries will support any US-led war in the name of so-called mutual defense. All this has disastrous effects on the livelihoods of the people of the world. In the Philippines, we see this playing out with the U.S. Marcos II regime. The son of an infamous dictator, Bongbong Marcos Jr., just approved the expansion of U.S. bases in four additional Philippine facilities. It is no coincidence that these four new facilities are along the so-called first island chain, a string of islands including <laughs> Taiwan and Okinawa, that face China and serve as the first line of defense against China's long-range missiles. The Indo-Pacific Command is establishing a network of precision strike missiles along the first island chain as part of the $27.4 billion budget to be spent by the U.S. in the Indo-Pacific. The U.S. so desperately wants to contain and if need be destroy China in order to maintain its desperate and dying empire. On April 11, Bayan USA will protest the start of the largest Balikatan exercises or shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder military exercises. This will be the largest ever Balikatan exercises with 12,000 US troops, 5,000 Filipino troops, and over 100 Australian troops. For the first time ever, 
These exercises will include maritime training, which will include sinking a ship with missiles in the contested West Philippine Sea in the waters facing Taiwan. This is all meant to intimidate and challenge China and stoke the flames of war, the opposite of assuring peace for our people. As Filipinos, we condemn this military posturing and the undermining of our national sovereignty. Our homelands are not a playground for the U.S. to launch its wars of aggression. We condemn the expansion of the U.S. war machine. No compromise, no retreat. We stand alongside our allies in UNAC, like Black Alliance for Peace, to fight for a just and lasting peace and build a grassroots mass movement to do just that. U.S. imperialist number U.S. Sorry, <laughs> um, U.S. imperialist number, number one, one terrorist. terrorist. Long live international solidarity. Thank you, Nina. And our final speaker is Margaret Kimberly. Margaret is a member of the Black Alliance for Peace Coordinating Committee and one of the coordinators of the Black Alliance for Peace Africa team. She is also the executive editor of Black Agenda Report and host of the Black Agenda radio podcast. She is a recipient of the Serena Sherm Award for Uncompromising Journalism and a member, a board member of Consortium News. She is the author of Presidential, Black America and the Presidents. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Julie. Thanks so much. Thank you and greetings to everyone for joining us today um, as we launched the Black Alliance for, for Peace Zone of Peace campaign. We are following the community of Latin American and Caribbean states, CELAC, in their 2014 declaration made at their meeting in Havana, Cuba, that the Caribbean and Latin America should be a zone of peace and affirming that the peoples of this hemisphere must play a role in that process of freeing themselves from US militarism and other forms of interference. The Zone of Peace Declaration was groundbreaking in its scope with members pledging to support a principle of non-intervention, mutual co cooperation, and a commitment to be guided by international law and the United Nations Charter. The proclamation also reaffirmed the commitment to keep the Caribbean and Latin America a nuclear-free zone. Of course, the Black Alliance for Peace supports that proclamation, but today we announced that we are doing more than that. As always, Black Alliance for Peace affirms the right of peoples to self-determination, and that means there must be grassroots popular support for the zone of peace concept. It isn't enough for states to make these declarations. The people must have a voice too if this declaration is to become a reality. In our declaration, uh, we say that BAP is building a region-wide coalition to rid the Americas of warmongers and foster a network of popular people's struggles grounded and informed by the needs and aspirations of the oppressed, this network would anchor a unified comprehensive strategy for decolonization and radical social change. change. The states of the region are in fact under constant attack from the US. This year is the 200th anniversary of the Monroe Doctrine in which the US declared that European states must stay out of the hemisphere which meant that the US was claiming the entire region as its own. And to this day, the idea of the Caribbean, Central America and South America being a backyard of Washington is openly expressed. SALAC exists as an effort to, counter, to counteract the control US exerts, uh, the US exerts through the Organization of American States. The Washington-based OAS is nothing more than the means for the US to prevent the rest of the region from acting with any degree of sovereignty. If there is no people-centered approach, then we see Southcom undermining national and popular rights. These US command structures, Southcom, Africom, Indo-Pacificcom, et cetera, exist for the purpose of exercising US control over the entire planet with its doctrine of full spectrum dominance. At Black Alliance for Peace, 
we initiated the U.S. Out of Africa Shut Down AFRICOM campaign. And every October during AFRICOM's founding anniversary, we mobilize people in this hemisphere and in Africa itself to say, shut down AFRICOM, withdraw U.S. forces from Africa, demilitarize the continent, close the 800 U.S. bases that exist outside of this country, including in Africa and every other continent, and we call on the Congressional Black Caucus to hold hearings on the impact of AFRICOM. Of course, we want to shut down Southcom too. The Southcom commander openly says the more usually more quiet part out loud, quote, why is the region important? With all its rich resources and rare earth elements, there's a lithium triangle, which is necessary for technology. 60% of the world's, world's lithium is found in the uh, lithium triangle of Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile, unquote. She added a need to box out our adversaries, and she mentioned China and box out our competitors in the region. Southcom, like AFRICOM, exists to secure resources for U.S. multinational corporations and in so doing, exert control over people and the governments that should represent them. <clears throat> there are many things I could talk about in this short time, but I briefly want to mention Nicaragua. Like Haiti and other countries in the region, it suffered under a U.S. attack for decades. Way back in the 1850s, a man named William Walker took a gang of mercenaries to Nicaragua, involved himself in the Civil War, and declared himself the president. And he was recognized by President Franklin Pierce. <clears throat> but the US sent Marines to Nicaragua in the 20th century who stayed for nearly 20 years. And now that nation's still under attack. Why? Because people there dared to elect the government of their choice. Today, the US doesn't send in Marines, but it will sanction nations like Nicaragua and Cuba and Venezuela and others around the world. And yes, sanctions kill. In Nicaragua, the US attempted a coup as late as 2018. And recently, the Secretary of State welcomed some of the coup makers in what? To Washington and uses war propaganda and even the United Nations, which is used to file spurious charges of human rights violations at the behest of the US. That's why BAP is needed to reach people in this region to educate and mobilize them and help make the zone of peace uh, a reality. Uh, BAP was founded in order to oppose these structures, founded on this date in 2017, and we continue to be true to our mission and our principles of unity, which bring us together to say, shut down Southcom, Yankees go home, and make the region a zone of peace. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. So, thank you, Margaret. We are going to take questions now from Zoom, our, our press participants on Zoom, on Facebook, and in person. And I see we have a question in the audience. Uh, can you say your name and your question? Uh, yeah, uh, so my name is John. Uh, my question is, uh, what is that book to get out of this campaign? So for the uh, people online who may not have heard, the question is, what does BAP hope to get out of this campaign? And who'd like to take that question? Hi, John, what are you doing? Okay. Thank you. Um, there are a few things we have to try to, um, to achieve. Uh, in terms of, of executing the campaign, we want to build uh, two structures. One will be a, a regional-wide coordinating structure uh, that will continue to develop the campaign. But we also are going to build a, a mass structure uh, called the U.S. NATO Out of the Americas Network. Uh, they will be geared toward um, mobilizing the support and the power of the people to expel those forces, specifically uh, the U.S. settler state, and NATO from our region. Now, when we say expel the US from the region, we're not talking about the uh, people of the United States, but we're talking about the, uh, the settler colonial state that has demonstrated that uh, it uh, is, is incapable of living uh, in our region in peace. 
that uh, it will continue to uh, evoke uh, a repression and to uh, impose itself on the uh, democratic aspirations of the people of this region. We see the US and NATO as representing a uh, existential threat, uh, not only to the people of our region, but to collective humanity. Unless there's a shift of power from these maniacs, uh, then we are all threatened. So this campaign is to help us to build that ability to in fact do that. And, and, and let us say this, we understand that uh, you know, there's a certain kind of politi politics we see in the US. Uh, some of us refer to this as the politics of pragmatism. We believe that there is uh, significant um, sectors of the population that are prepared to engage in a real uh, effort to transform ourselves, that they are, are, are fed up with unending wars. They are, uh, are, are fed up with seeing their, their resources plundered by elements of the military industrial complex. Uh, we, they, they, they see the, the obscene profits that have been made just from the uh, Ukrainian manufactured crisis in war, uh, where the energy companies and the military uh, uh, arms suppliers are reaping uh, obscene levels of profits. They are beginning to see that war, in fact, is a racket. And so they are prepared to oppose this. And that opposition is what the rulers in this uh, oligarchy uh, are, are attempting to try to undermine. They don't want that kind of awareness to become more aware of itself. Well, this campaign is geared to, in fact, uh, uh, deal with that, to, to bring that kind of opposition to the surface. We want to do a few things in terms of our concrete objectives in this campaign. One, we want to dismantle Southcom and shut down the 76 military bases in our region. We want to end all US and NATO military exercises, close all foreign military bases, installations, and enclaves, as well as withdraw foreign occupation forces from our region. We want to disband US sponsored state terrorist training facilities. Uh, like the Western Hemisphere Institute for Security Cooperation, formerly known as the School of the Americas, basically a, a, a terrorist facility. And we want to oppose um, and we reject any attempt to try to legitimize a military intervention into Haiti. And we say that um, the Guantanamo territory must be returned. Guantanamo and Cuba must be returned to the people uh, of Cuba and to the Cuban state. And we say, as a few have already indicated, sanctions are a form of war. They murder people. They don't respect democratic and human rights. They don't respect national sovereignty. Uh, we say in illegal sanctions and blockades of our uh, regional states, including all economic warfare, lawfare, and recognize the sovereignty and of these states and respect their attempts at self-determination. That's what we hope to achieve uh, in this campaign. All right, thank you. So um, do we have any questions from online, from Zoom or from Facebook? Okay, one first question was about the video for this, and we'll be sending it out. Yes, we'll be posting the video, and people will be having access to the video after it's over. But then there's also a question according to the State Department website, the designation of major non NATO ally status has been given to three countries of our region Argentina, Brazil, and Colombia. It's defined as a designation under US law that provides foreign partners with certain benefits in the areas of defense, trade, and security cooperation. Do you have an ask for, do you have an ask or message for these governments? 
uh, and this is from Camila from Pal Schwan News. Okay, so uh, for people... Always let me know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me give me a chance. Okay, so for people online who did not hear, the question from online was uh, one that the... Um, the video will be available. It's on Facebook right now, live streaming, so that live stream can be played back. The second one was from Camila Escalante at Calcetun News about the three non-NATO allies in the region and uh, how the U.S. is uh, using that to continue its uh, war on the region, on the people of the region. And so uh, if one of you can answer that question that came up, please. Well, we are, um, oh, let me take this off. We are, uh, as, as we've all said, we are launching this in order to mobilize people um, around the hemisphere. You know, their uh, governments um, uh, uh, may issue a, a declaration such as this, but they're uh, under constant US uh, attack threats uh, appeals to certain interests uh, in their countries who uh, are uh, not working in the interests of the people. So that is a part of our uh, role here in this process is to uh, uh, mobilize people in those countries in all of the countries of the region so that they can speak up, they can be supportive of the elements uh, in their states who want to live up to these principles. Uh, and that is why it's so important for this not to uh, just be a state responsibility so that people in the uh, nations mentioned uh, can have the freedom, uh, can have the solidarity within their countries and outside to speak up about uh, US actions and the impact on their countries and to have the ability to speak out when, when they should uh, uh, to oppose decisions that their leadership makes. So I think the examples of those nations make clear why it's so important for us to help give a voice to millions of people. And if Ajama Baraka wants to... And if Ajama Baraka wants to comment also on the question. Just, just briefly. Um, and, and to follow up um, and, and add to what Margaret just said, we part of this campaign is to, in fact, raise these questions with, with our friends in these various states. We quite clear. We say that we believe in the concept of, of total peace. And that concept of total peace means to expel those foreign elements that are, uh, have been bringing death and destruction to our region. So we say that NATO has to be expelled. We again assert that is the it is the US EU NATO axis of domination that represents the real threat uh, to peace uh, and prosperity in our region. So we're going to have conversations. I mean, you know, one of the things that we're going to see that will result from this campaign is more accountability. So the the so legitimizing that relationship. Uh, between various states and NATO is going to um, uh, come into increased uh, uh, questioning, we think, during the course of this campaign. And I, th and I think we'll, we'll, we'll be uh, able to successfully uh, see some changes in that relationship. Thank you, Ajamu. And, uh, and uh, Jamima Pierre. Yes, I, I'd just like to add um, to um, the two comments to just, you know, um, the question asked what message we have for these governments. And it, it's interesting is to the, the thing we should we would do is basically call out the contradictions. How can you go around um, asserting sovereignty, especially new governments in Brazil and Colombia um, and Argentina, asserting sovereignty, um, but yet. Uh, playing almost a, a, a lapdog role to the U.S. and 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 then and then the U.S. UN um, NATO axis of domination. How could you support this violent military organization called NATO that's been around um, for um, 
really destroying other nations and destroying sovereignty. How do you not know that the U.S. has no friends? <laughs> the U.S. Has, has, has people that and countries that it uses. And so those are the questions I would ask these governments um, around this. Okay, thank you, Jamima. And uh, we have a question from the audience, actually. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll alternate. So uh, there's one from the audience here, actually. Can you state your name and your question, please? And I'll just repeat for the audience. Okay. Hi, my name is Jill Clark Olive, and I'm with uh, Friends of Latin America and also the Nicaragua Solidarity Coalition. And I am very, I'd like to congratulate Black Alliance for Peace for this initiative and for the leadership role that you've played in the anti-war movement in the United States and now around the world ever since the founding of Black Alliance for Peace. And I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit more about um, the BAP Solidarity Network and how non-African people can support the work of BAP. Thank you. Okay, I'll take that question because I'm one of the coordinators of the Solidarity Network. Uh, so the Solidarity Network was consolidated in 2020 to allow non-Africans to support the work of the Black Alliance for Peace and to uh, partner with us in this movement that we're building. And so uh, if, if you join the Solidarity Network, either as an individual or as an organization, you uh, become part of this network uh, of people who are trying to build a, uh, an anti-imperialist movement in the heart of the empire of the United States. And uh, our people, our members are doing all kinds of things from uh, uh, writing an Afghanistan newsletter that comes out regularly. Uh, and uh, they just launched a prisoner support committee and, uh, and they'll be very active with this zone of peace campaign that has just launched today. And so uh, that those are some of the ways that uh, non-African people can support the Black Alliance for Peace in, 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 by joining the Solidarity Network. Thank you for your question. How can they join? And they can join by going to blackallianceforpeace.com slash join. Thank you. And uh, we will take a question from the audience online. Actually, I think that the, the one that we had in here was just answered. Okay, uh, so we just so, yeah, it was yeah. how do people get involved with this initiative? Oh, well, this initiative oh, actually. Sorry. To get uh, there was a question about how to get involved with this initiative. Uh, with the Zone of Peace campaign, the website is live now. It is blackallianceforpeace.com slash zone of peace. You can go there, check out the resources, get an understanding of the, the reasoning, the rationale behind the campaign. Uh, you can download those resources. You can ask your organizations to endorse and join the Zone of Peace campaign, which includes joining the US slash NATO out of the Americas network, which is the mass based uh, the mass based structure for moving this work forward. And uh, you can uh, check all that out at blackallianceforpeace.com slash zone of peace. Any other questions? Oh, we have someone in the back here. Hi, my name is Rebecca. I'm part of Pan African Community Action, aka PAHO, which is also a member organization of that. And I just had a question about the concept or the um, a principle of peace. Um, the alliance is called Black Alliance for Peace. The campaign has the word um, peace in it. And I just really uh, would like um, for the panelists to discuss what peace means specifically at BAP and why it's important. Um, for the zone of peace effort. Take that question. Okay. Thank you. I think. Uh, thank you. Very, very important question because there, there is uh, an approach to the peace idea that I think really distinguishes the Black Alliance for Peace. Uh, and is at the center of this campaign. We 
our work is informed by what we define as the Black radical peace tradition. Uh, we have, uh, as part of our membership, one of the leading uh, young scholars uh, in this field, uh, Dr. Uh, C, we call it Dr. CBS, uh, Dr. Sharice uh, uh, Burley. Hey, hey, Stelly, Stelly, yes, that's what we say, Dr. CBS, uh, who's, who's for people like me, who's been in the forefront of developing this concept. And the, the way in which we define the Black radical peace tradition is that peace is not the absence of conflict, but rather the achievement by popular struggle and self defense of a world liberated from the interlocking issues that contribute to global conflict. This will be accomplished through the defeat of the global systems of oppression that include colonialism, imperialism, patriarchy, and white supremacy. So for us, one achieves peace by identifying those structures that perpetuate violence. It's not changing people's minds, but changing structures of relations power relations. It is looking at these structures that have to be transformed and uh, by the people. So that is the way in which we approach this notion of peace. We say uh, the only way we have peace is through justice. And the only way you achieve justice is through struggle. So that is the approach that we use in the Black, uh, in the Black Alliance of Peace. Thank you, Jamu. So we can take, uh, we have time for just one last question. We can take it from online. Uh, anything for us from Facebook or Zoom? Just give us a moment as we're scrolling through. Thank you for your patience. And again, if you uh, haven't already checked it out, our web page is live for the campaign blackalliancefor.peace.com slash zone of peace. And that's where you can find uh, the definition of the black radical peace tradition as well. Okay, we can uh, close it down now. Thank you so much for joining us again. If you want to get involved with this campaign, you can go to blackallianceforpeace.com slash zone of peace. I want to thank all of our panelists here and as well as our uh, press and attendees in person, as well as on Zoom and on Facebook. Thank you so much. No compromise. No retreat. No retreat. <laughs> <laughs>